Hey, Coach, so glad you made it to this video. Go over and check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better. You won't be disappointed. 14-day free trial. What can I say? It's my business. Check it out. Thanks. All right, we're going to get started here. A couple of minutes early. But that's okay. Um, so there are a couple questions. And then if you've got questions, put them over um, in the chat over on the side. And I will uh, definitely get to them as fast as I can. Um, so one of them was, this is from Janice. Um, and she had put it in a little bit earlier. But her question was, um, and, and when I'm looking to the side over here, it's because I'm, you know, I don't have quite my, yeah, I move it over a little bit. Um, I don't have quite my uh, setup the way it normally is. My daughter was in doing homework in my office today. So I don't have everything quite set up the, the way I normally do. But anyway, so the first question was, what do you talk about at halftime and how do you break it? How do you break your halftime up? Um, so how do you, you know, how do you tackle a specific halftime? And, um, you know, we have in where I coach, um, we have 10 minutes at halftime. So uh, the way it works is usually, you know, obviously the buzzer goes. Um, I have an assistant coach who goes and checks the book to make sure that we're, we've got fouls and everything situated correctly at that point. And then um, I put, the, I put the, the team into the locker room um, and let them have several minutes by themselves um, before, before we come in and uh, um, have our discussion. So what I do is I get the coaches together and we, um, we basically talk at that point um, and kind of come up with some solutions of the first half. What are we doing well? What are we not doing well? What can our adjustments be for the second half? Um, so then, uh, yeah, so adjustments, what can we do? We talk about offensive adjustments. We talk about defensive adjustments. I apologize for the talking in the background there. Um, and then, uh, so then I go in um, and we tend to do our, we tend to do our, uh, sets. We tend to talk about our offensive sets. We talk about our defensive sets. And I think it's really important at halftime specifically that you need to um, talk about probably those key two or three adjustments just before you leave the locker room. Um, those are really important as far as kind of heading out to the second half. And I usually try to leave two or three minutes to get them loose, get them moving again after halftime. Um, I think teams come out of halftime a little flat sometimes, especially depending on the first half went. Um, so I like to leave a couple minutes. I like to um, to do those specific things. Um, hi, Todd. How are you? Um, so you can, I guess, I, I didn't know on Facebook Live you could also leave comments. But anyway, so we were just talking about halftime, what we do kind of do with halftime. Um, you know, it's not nuclear physics as far as how we handle halftime, but again, um, we check fouls, we check any, anybody that's going off, anybody that's doing really well the first half, we meet as a staff so we can talk about offense and defensive stuff. Um, then, um, we, uh, so we talk about offensive and defensive stuff, uh, so we basically come up with a plan as a coaching staff before I go in and talk to them at halftime. I think that's really important. I'd rather have less time in the, in the locker room at halftime and be able to converse about things that we need than me just kind of going right in. Um, and then uh, I usually start with the defensive parts, to be honest with you, and then I talk about the offensive parts. And then any motivational, anything we're not doing, maybe we're not getting the floor, we're not taking charges. And then just before we leave the locker room, you know, I hit them with a couple things. Hey, remember, we got to get back on defense. We got to know where 22 is at all times, um, whatever. And then we, after that, after that spurt of me talking for four or five minutes, because most of it they're going to forget, then uh, I go into, um, I make sure they get out so they have enough time to warm up. So it's not too much. After the game, so Janice also asked about what we do after the game. Um, after the game, it really depends. Um, they don't hear you as well. 
do they hear you at halftime? Eh. Um, but they definitely don't hear you. First of all, after a tough loss, they don't hear you after a big win. They tend to hear you if it's in a game. Um, so if there's something really important for me to say, I don't tend to say it after the game. I will keep it short. And there are exceptions to this. And I've actually broken this exception this year um, after some wins that I didn't think we played well. And I thought, hey, we got to adjust. And that was right. And we stumbled a couple of times because of some of the things I said in those. But um, they don't tend to hear it if you need to if you need to get on kids, if you need to talk about what they did well or what they didn't do well, after the game doesn't tend to be the time to talk to a group. I will grab a specific kid or a specific group. Of, hey, you did this. You were really rebounding well, and you were doing this exceptionally well. I was so good. I was, I'm, I'm so proud of you. Um, but as, a, as an entire group, hey, nice win, blah, 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 two or three minutes, and then I try to get out of there. Um, they will hear the words that you have to say better the next day at practice or in your film session or something like that than they will after a big win, after a big loss. I don't know. They're thinking 20 different things. Who, how am I getting home? You know, is my girl, my friend mad at me, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It, it, it is, um, it's that kind of stuff that goes through their mind. So, um, if any, again, if you have any, co any other questions, you know, put them in the comments down below or over in the side, um, and I will definitely get to them. I'm just going through ones that I got people sent me before um, this Q&A. So we talked about halftime. We talked about after the game. Um, uh, someone sent me, you know, how do you deal with a player who has a bad attitude but is, <laughs> but is one of my better players? Um, that's a tough one. I'm going to tell you that's a, that's a difficult one. Um, you can't teach without discipline. Kids want discipline is my, is my theory with that. Um, you know, if they're not doing what you expect them to do, then there has to be a consequence. Um, so it doesn't matter if it's your best player. It doesn't matter if it's number 15 on your bench. Everything's got to be kind of consistent throughout. Um, and if it's not, you're going to lose the control of the ship and bad things are going to happen. So, um, it doesn't matter that they, it does matter they have a bad attitude because, you know, one bad apple can spoil a whole bunch. So you got to get that one on or you got to get rid of that one. Um, and then uh, you can move forward, to be honest with you. I think that's really important. Um, do you, here's another question. Do you do film review um, with the team after every game? Do you watch it from start to finish? That's a great question. So we use crossover. We don't, we do, we use a lot of film. Um, we have a big game tomorrow really big game tomorrow one of the top teams in our state that we play tomorrow um and i think we have nine or ten games on them so uh we do we do different types of film sessions so that that's a great question for all the for all the coaches out there so the way film sessions work for us is um normally the day after a game uh especially if we didn't play well we will look at our film and it depends there'll, there'll be times where we sit down and watch the entire film um, and we'll break it down and we'll stop it and rewind it. You know, that takes a good 45 minutes to an hour at least to do that. Uh, so we'll do that possibly after a game. Sometimes we'll just do clips after a game. Um, you know, we'll show, we'll show like the three minute mark to the seven minute mark, or we'll show where we're, where our press was really good. So that's the first thing with film. Um, it really depends on the opponent and really depends on what we're doing and where we are in the season. So I hope that helps, Todd. And then that's the first thing. So, so the second thing is um, we spend a lot of time looking at opponents because I think I think coaching is a lot as much of how am I going to adjust how how is player X going to adjust to player Y? Um, how are we going to adjust to the, to what they're doing? I think you know, especially with with junior high, middle school, youth, high school, even the in the co collegiate level. Um, it's really important um, to be able to uh, adjust, okay? So it is really about matchups, and it's really about how are we going to stop player 22? How are we going to stop him or her? Um, what are we going to do to do that? Um, what adjustments can happen there? So I think those are really important. Again, guys, if you have, um, if you have comments over on the side, um, anything else you uh, – you want um please leave it over there you know we'll uh 
we can uh, we can definitely ask questions um, over in the chats. If you're watching Facebook Live, if you're listening to the podcast, because this has probably become one of my podcasts at some point, because I think this is a lot of really good stuff. Um, or if you're you're on our you know our our live Q and A right now, either any of the places, um, make sure that you go over and leave a leave a comment if you've got a question. I'm just going through questions that people have already sent me. Um, so if I go over here on the side, I can, uh, that's why I'm looking at, I'm looking at the questions that people had pre sent me. Um, but finishing up with your question, Todd, um, I think, uh, I think film is film doesn't lie. I think I said that like four times today in practice. Um, somebody wasn't boxing out. Somebody wasn't, um, rotating correctly. And, uh, what did I do? <laughs> you know, we showed him some film and, uh, it doesn't, you know, you you weren't getting there. You weren't rotating the way you needed to rotate. Um, that's a problem. And the film doesn't. You know, look at it. The film doesn't lie. We talked about it in game. We talked about it in practice. You did it in the game. We need to fix this problem. So, um, and then we we like I told you. I don't know if I told you, Todd, but we use crossover. So crossover is. I'm a stats teacher. Crossover is great for analytics. It's great for breakdowns. You know, we can we can show John's every one of John's three pointers that we're playing. And then how does he deal with those? And then, you know, here's, um, here's a specific thing. Um, do you film practice? I don't, I used to film practice. Um, there's a reason I, you know, the problem is <laughs> there's only what 168 hours in a week and I don't have time. So a lot of that film initially when I, when I did it sat unwatched, um, and got watched in like June, which is not of any use to anybody. Um, so there will be times um, for for members of Teach Hoops. I have actually pra I have actually taped my practices and shared it with them. Um, that's something I actually want to do. And for for those of you up above that are or or that are listening, teachhoops.com um, is my membership site. It's great. It's a great Todd can vouch. It's a great community. A lot of resources, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, so what I've thought about doing, and I talked to Dean about this too in the community, that maybe we should get together and tape each other's practices, and then that would be great. If nothing else for the off season, it's like, ooh, look what Dean does in practice, or look what Harmony does in her practice in California, or look what Todd does, you know. So it would be, yeah. Um, it is an awesome community. I agree, Todd. But um, – no, I, I, that's something I've thought about. The problem is, it's like, okay, so here's the issue with, pra with taping practice. College coaches do it. They also have four assistants. They also have a, a video coordinator that's breaking it all down. They also have time to watch it. They don't have other gigs like you and I do, you know, side gigs or side hustles. Like, you know, we're te I'm teaching math all day. I don't have time to sit down and watch my practice. Um, so that's the issue with taping practice, I think. I think it's a good thing to do, um, but... I think it's easier said than done to be able to find time to be able to watch it. Um, so, um, Todd, did you get that package I sent? I sent it. It's school mail. So I may want to make sure he gets it. Um, Todd's got a special needs kid on his, I think, uh, yeah, he's got Down syndrome, I believe. Anyway, um, I sent him a package and I want to make sure he gets it. So if he doesn't get it, you let me know. It is school mail. It went out through the school mail. So it could be three weeks from now. Who knows? Um, do I have a shooting machine? Yes, I have a shooting machine. Um, we're in the process of buying another shooting machine. Um, I use Dr. Dish. Um, I like Dr. Dish better. Um, we're going, oh, they're going to give it tomorrow on senior net. All right. So, so Brad, I'm going to get back to your question. Hold on one second. So, like I said, I sent this package. Um, I found some stuff for, um, you know, some t-shirt, but anyway, I'm so happy, Todd. That, I mean, that's what I love about our teach hoops community. I, I love that. I love that coaches are talking anyway. So soup, I want a picture of, of, I want a picture of him getting that. Um, so I can share it with the boys. I told team, my team signed their, our poster and stuff. We do a poster and stuff and, um, they all signed it and wanted to make sure that he got it and stuff. So I definitely want a picture so I can share it with my guys and let's, let's hope we play well tomorrow. Um, so going back to you, Brad, um, so, uh, we, I believe in the shooting. So I, first of all, there's a, there's a 15, almost 16 year old living in my house who has spent a lot of time, um, 
on the shooting machine. He has spent a lot of time. I've told him he's a great shooter. He's not a scorer yet. The shooting machine is great for repetition. There's a couple guys on my team that just need more reps right now. So the shooting machine is good. Every second I can get him another shot. Um, so from that standpoint, I love the shooting machine. I think it's a great way. We don't have all the managers. We don't have the people rebounding for our kids. Um, like the opponent we play tomorrow, I think has four or five shooting machines. It's the haves versus the have nots, to be honest with you. Um, but anyway, uh, they're great for getting shots up. You have to be creative, a doctor dish and the gun and all them do really good things with drills and stuff. I know on my teach hoops community, I've got some, um, some shooting drills with the machine. I want to definitely do more with that. Um, just because you, how often do you get your feet squared? You get an open shot, blah, blah, blah. And that's what the shooting machine is good for. I think it's good for that. And I also think it's good for, um, uh, you guys are asking questions too fast here. I got to make sure I read them all. Um, and I also think, uh, what was my train of, train of thought? This is, I'm having a senior moment. Uh, oh, it's great for arc too. It's really good for arc. Um, I like that it teaches arc. Um, you can't shoot a flat shot and, 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 uh, and get on the shooting machine. Um, yeah, I, I would agree. Um, I would agree that uh, that uh, Dr. Dish is the way to go. I don't know. I think the gun is fine. I, I just think that Dr. Dish has more um, possibilities for you as far as trying to get shots up, type of shots, um, locations, those kind of things. So that's why I like it. Um, I'm having really bad glare today. Uh. Maybe it's just because it's the middle of February and I live in Wisconsin and um, uh, I can't, uh, I can't, literally can't, um, <laughs> I can't see. So everyone that's listening right now is going, what is he talking about? It's like, well, I'm trying to do, I'm multitasking, which is, I guess what a good coach does. He multitasks. Um, I'm trying to do Facebook Live. I'm trying to do Zoom. I'm trying to tape it all at once. And the Facebook Live literally looks like I'm like I haven't seen sun in a really long time. But anyway, we'll move on. Um, I don't have you know what? I wish Brad asked if I have any coaching clinics set up. I don't, you know, I'm 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 working with Dean in the in our teach hoops community to try to help me get some of those. I mean, I've done them all over the country. I mean, I've been on the East Coast. I've, I mean, I'd like to go warm, but I've been all over. Um, I haven't done any for a couple of reasons. First, I started coaching volleyball because my son started playing volleyball. So I started coaching volleyball, which took the fall away from me a little bit. Um, I'm going to try to do some United basketball clinics maybe in the, this fall. Um, and then it's like I got to find time to to kind of try to find the people, say I'm available, da 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 um, so Dean is going to maybe try to help me do that. Um, but I don't have any lined up right now. And that, and again, one of the reasons I started teach hoops.com is I wanted to be able to get back. I wanted to be able to answer questions, that kind of stuff. And I guess I can do that anywhere in the world. We have members from Australia and stuff. So, um, yeah. Um, oh, I'd love to come to Florida. <laughs> I love, I love to come to Florida. We're talking about spring break, maybe. Um, and I forgot, Todd, tell me where you are in the, in the area. But no, I, I just, you know, I, I'm going to be honest, and this is going to, well, my wife's going to kill me. Um, most of the clinics I do, it's basically cost. You know, um, my only gig is if, you, if I run one, you let me tape it. Um, and, you know, you get me there and you get me home and you feed me. And, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't do this to make a lot of money. I just like talking to coaches some of the best times I've had at clinics too. This is no lie. Um, and I've met some of, I met some of the, the best coaches in the world, blah, blah, blah. And the best one is actually not even at the clinic. It's like, okay, the clinic's over and then we go have dinner or the clinic or we have breakfast or something. And then you get like six, seven coaches. What I'd eventually like to do in, you know, I'd like to run, I'd like to run a, a meet and greet kind of thing. I'd like to run like a live event where, you know, I've always thought this was something for coaches where it's like a retreat. We get away for a weekend and you can, you know, we can only do so much here via, via audio. And, you know, I, I, I 
you know, if people have X's and O questions. I can definitely do that. I have, I have, I have the capabilities of showing you stuff too. Um, especially for the people that are on zoom. I, I don't know about Facebook live, but anyway, um, yeah. So that in my utopian world, um, Okay, so Cape Cod, where is that south of Tampa? So I'm, I, again, I'm I'm reading Todd's questions here. Um, if it is south of Tampa, then you're in warm warm. I'm guessing you're north of Tampa. Um, other questions? Does anybody have any in the in the chat um, or down below? Um, let me know, and uh, we can definitely we can definitely a ask them. Um, there is one thing someone asked. Let me just pull this up, especially for the people that are on. People that are on the people that are on Facebook Live are going to have to be patient. Um, people that are on registered on the, the thing. Um, someone asked about uh, uh, low screens and how to get get kind of open movements. I think it's really big um, as far as getting open movements when you set the screens to get to this hash. Um, so you really want to make sure that you're posting up and you're setting screens at that hash. So not the block, you move yourself up. And I think this might have been Janice again. I don't know if this was Janice or Mike that asked this question. But anyway, um, when you set these screens, most people are down here at the, at the, at the block. you got to move up to the first hash, the second hash, and do all of your movements in that area. Um, you know, if you got a really good team, you know, Wesley's always told me that the hidden area is this area right down here behind the backboard where you can kind of get lost. Um, depending on the kind of teams you have. But we, uh, we try to do a lot of our post movements in this region right in here, which is, again, from the first, for those of you that are listening, from the, not from the block, from the first hash to the second hash going toward the free throw line. Um, that's where a lot of good things can happen. As far as being able to score, as far as being able to attack, and giving your guards, bigs, whoever's doing it, um, space. Um, I think that's really important to be able to have space to be able to do that. All right, any cool, let me get out of this, stop the share. Are there any other questions from people um, that you want me to go over? Uh, you know, I can, I can basically do anything. I've gone through all the pre-given list here. Um, is there anybody over here? Uh, Can you give the story as to why you don't use the whistle during practices? Yes. Okay. So Brad asked, why don't I use a whistle during practice? Um, because, all right. So this is a long, this is a long story. You know, all, every coach basically when they start coaching gets a whistle. That's the first thing they get. Um, and I was the, I was the same. I had a stopwatch. I had a whistle when I started coaching. Um, and, uh, I quickly learned um, I quickly learned that I wanted them to be able to and if I if I start moving it's because I'm reading and I am in denial about having to have readers at this point so I'm trying to read this I'm trying to read that anyway so going back to the whistle thing so I believe that they, I want them to hear my voice what is a whistle what does a whistle mean in a game a whistle means in a game something's wrong okay Somebody traveled, somebody fouled, somebody did that. Okay, which is fine. If that's what you want to use the whistle for, I blow the whistle that they need to stop. Great, use the whistle for that. But what I want is I want them to be able to hear my voice. Okay, they're not going to always be able to do that, especially um, especially in a packed gym. You know, tomorrow we've got a big game and the place is going to, I mean, they're not going to hear someone two feet from them. But if there is a voice I want them to hear, it's my voice. So if I'm yelling something out or we don't have any timeouts left or we need to be able to execute something, the only voice they need to hear is me <laughs> um, and the other four guys on the court. So that's why, you know, and, and, and it gets them tuned into my voice. My, you know, I have a deep voice. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a little deeper than normal because I have a cold. Um, but I want them tuned into my voice knowing what I'm doing. Um, that's important to me. Uh, that's why I don't use the whistle. Uh, the whistle is fine. Like I said, you know, I don't, I hate to compare them to dogs, but a dog whistle does what, you know, it, it trains a dog to do specific things. Same thing with a whistle. 
tells them to stop play, blah, blah, blah. So if you're using the whistle to stop play or move, okay. Um, I have better ways to transition from drill to drill than necessarily a whistle. So what I want to do is I want to, you know, I want them to be tuned into my voice. And Brad, that's the reason I don't use a whistle. It's probably the reason when I'm 75, I won't have a voice. <laughs> but um, I've, I have found it to be very successful um, not using the whistle. Um, so I had a hard, here's another question. Oops, from Whitney, as I'm losing my mic. All right, hold on one second. You can tell this is a live video. All right, I'm gonna hold this. Well, I'll make it easier. Um, trying trying to fix something when you're doing a live video or audio is hard. So I'm just gonna hold it. We'll make it do, and then I will fix this later. <laughs> so again, not mapped out. That's what I love about this. Anyway, um, I have a hard time getting my players to transition from their long day at school to getting ready to work hard in practice. What drills do you use to the energy flow early on? All right. So Whitney, that's a great question. Um, so I have changed on this. You know, I used to come in and um, spend a lot of time early trying to get them moving. So what I do is I give them about 10, 15 minutes of individual workout time at the beginning of practice. Um, I have found that to be good. Like I have my bigs working with an assistant coach. I have the guys that need to get on the machine doing that. I have someone. So it lets them kind of get dressed, get out of the locker room, get into what they need to get into. And then um, we transition. So then I, then I cue them back going back to what Brad said. Don't, don't put any more questions up. Cause I'm, I'm not reading fast enough. Um, so then I transition back. So then they have their, so what happens is, they get to see their girlfriend, they get a little snack, they get changed, they come in the gym and I'm not on them. So they get a little bit of downtime before school, after school, which we all need downtime. I mean, shoot, I take it at lunch and watch Parks and Rec or something. I don't know. I need downtime too. So give them a little downtime. And then in, in, in that 15 minutes will not make the difference between you winning and losing the next game. Trust me. And then you cue them back. So then I, what I do is I gather them back together and I say, all right, Here's what we're going to do at practice. And I cue it up. I say, hey, we're going to work on getting trapped. We're going to work on our transition. Time to get to work. We're going to keep this short and sweet. And, and, and Whitney, that really helps a lot. It does. Um, it took me 20 years to figure that out. You know, why aren't, they, why aren't they ready to practice? I'm ready. I got my practice plan, blah, blah, blah. Yes, you are. You're the adults. And sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I need a Snickers bar or a soda or something to get going. Um, but they need to be able to to leave student bill, which is different. You know, it is a classroom, but it is different to go to, all right, now we're a team bill. You know, I, I think that's really important, but that's a great question, Whitney. Um, uh, who do you have lined up for future podcasts or would you like to line up as who would you, or who would you like to line up? Uh, you know, you, so who is that Lance? That's a great question, Lance. Um, I have, you know, Future podcasts, you know, I tend to do my interviewing once the season's over and then I queue them up for the rest of the year. If you've got any ideas, send me an email. I'm always open. I'm looking for people that have that are motivational, that love basketball, that are coaches, that are whatever. So um, it's Steve at teachhoops.com, Steve at teachhoops.com. So that's a great question, Lance. If, if there's anybody that you would like me to try to go get, I would, I'm open. Um, the podcast has really kind of taken off, um, which has excited me. I love doing it. It's basically talking hoops. That's why I decided to do this three days ago. It's like, oh, let's do, let's do a Q and a, um, I got a big game tomorrow. Otherwise I'm going to be sitting in the living room thinking, <laughs> thinking about what I should have done at practice rather, rather than what I did do at practice. Um, we got, uh, okay. So seniors, I'm reading here, so hold on. Uh, so, Bill, okay. So, I added something about, you know, building. So, moving on to next season. So, Todd, those are all great questions. Um, so, how do you build trust? Well, here's this is the issue, and I've, I'm, I'm thoroughly convinced about this. You don't build trust with your team 
from November to March. You build trust with your team from March to November. Okay, it's the whole winter basketball players made blah 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 blah. Um, because I got to be hard. I got to be dad during the season. I got to be the hard guy. I got to be the one that's saying demanding that they get there in time. I'm the one that's got to say why aren't you blocking out? Okay, in the off season, it's a totally different ball game. Um, I can you know I can be more. Um, I can be more. You know. Not, I'm not saying friend, but I can be more um, conducive to, to discussions. I can find out about their lives. I can, I don't have to be honest. There's a couple of things I don't have. I literally don't have time during the season. And then, cause I, you know, I'm worried about the next opponent, you know, where we're doing here, blah, 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 blah. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is um, that's when relationships are built. Relation, they're they're going to trust me. They're going to run through a wall for me because they know I love them but they're going to find that out more in the off season than during the season. Um, and we, Todd, we can, in our, in the teach hoops community or on faith in our Facebook group and stuff, we can definitely talk about that. Um, put that up. I'd love put that up in our private Facebook group. And I'd love to see what the other coaches in our community say. I would love to see that. Um, my bigs have trouble finishing through contact. Do you have any drills? So, so Robert asked that question, Robert, do you use, um, the football dummy thing. So they're big pads um, that basically they use during football. Um, do you use those? If you don't, you should every day. That's what we we do a lot of drill with our bigs using those football dummy things. And I, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I can definitely um, I can definitely find one, but to show you at some point. Um, but that's what we do. They're the big. They're like square, and they're you know how they. Um, they tend to be on those slides, but they have individual ones that you hold. And I th- I'm sure you can buy them at like Dick's and stuff like that. I've just gotten a couple from our football staff and they're just pound things. And I, and I'm old, you know, I'm 50 plus and I'll get in there and bang with them. Cause I know I got that pad and unless I break a hip or something, I'm, I'm going to be, <laughs> I'm going to be okay. Um, but anyway, so, uh, yeah, Amazon has those pads. Brad just said Amazon has those pads. Yeah, Amazon would be better than Dix. Dix tends to be expensive, my personal opinion. Anyway, I don't own Dix stock, so I don't really care. But uh, <laughs> so, yes, they're really good. And Brad, I don't know if you use them, but I, I'm a big fan. Um, all right, other questions. If you can honestly believe, so it's almost nine. Is it nine something? I haven't even eaten dinner yet. So I practice that around my kids around, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I, I know we have people on Facebook Live. We have people on our, our um, I and mean, I'm going to try to send the people that missed it um, this. But uh, if you have not, I'm going to tell you something. And, and Todd, who's over here, can tell you the Teach Hoops community is great. We're growing. Um, I'm getting to the point where I'm going to have to um, hire some help because <laughs> it's growing so fast and I can't respond and get to people. I want to be able to like help Todd when he sends me an email or, or Bob or Harmony, whatever. Whoever sends me an email, I want to be able to respond very quickly. So I have to get rid of some, rid of some of the other stuff. So prices are going to be going up. It's great. I can't, I mean, it's a great community. Um, it, I'm it's you know, the prices are going to be going up substantially. Um, what's your ideal tech technique for catching and shooting? Yeah, I like that. He's asking, I've been do, doing the attack to pass. Yeah, I like that. You know, there's we we'd have to do that on another one, Brad, because there's a whole different there's whole are you are you a step shooter? Are you a hop shooter? You know, in which progression do you go? Um, I think it's super important to be able to have the hands up and to be able to be, be to be able to catch in that manner. Um, but that would be a great idea for podcasts. Maybe I'll put that for a lesson. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to Facebook live. People can watch here or just listen for a second, especially the people that are, are listening here. Um, I'm going to show one thing. I got to pull it up. Um, that's not what I want. This is what I want. Um, so what I was saying before, you know, I, I, I don't remember whose I pulled up. I think I pulled up Dean's teachhoops.com thing. But there is so much stuff in this 
Um, like I said, we're probably going to be increasing. We're at nineteen ninety nine a month. It's like like twelve or fourteen bucks for a month if you go for a year. I'm telling you right now, you will not find a better deal. It's not only it's not only the stuff like the the amount of videos we've got on here. You know, I'm doing a bunch of stuff on Read and React because a bunch of our members have been asking about it. So I've been doing a lot with Read and React. Um, we have office hours every month. So I put all the old office hours. You can see all the old office hours are loaded in there. Um, we have plays and drills. We have practice plans. There's practice plans upon practice plans. Um, you cannot like, oh my goodness, look at all these practice plans in here if you're watching this. It's just a great thing. And then the video library alone, it's worth a video. You know, you're going to spend 29, 39 bucks just for one DVD. There's hundreds of hours of video on here, defensive lessons, rebounding, offensive lessons. I can't imagine how long it would take to get through everything. So, um, and then we have, like I was telling, talking with Todd about, we have this private Facebook group where, you know, the discussions, and that's why I told him, come back over and, and put your stuff in here because this is where we talk. You know, this is where you can kind of see that we communicate. We're bouncing ideas off each other. It's a great community. So go over and check it out. It's a 14-day free trial, um, www.teachhoops.com. Um, I think it's a great deal. It's, you know, it's the way I was trying to reach out to more people. Um, I think at the end of this month, prices are going to increase substantially, um, 25 to 50%. Um, for a couple reasons, I want to make pre make sure people are really dedicated that are in it. Uh, people that are already in it are grandfathered, like Todd never has to worry about his price going up. Um, so if you're thinking about it, I would recommend it. Do it now before later. Um, and, I, you know, it's a great gig. All right. Um, all right. Any other questions from any of the other coaches? Um Todd, we're going to have an office hour next Sunday, is that my guess? Uh, maybe this Sunday. Um, so if you're listening, um, and again, if you're thinking of joining teachhoops.com, I, I think you'll love it. But again, I'm biased. So, um, all right, everybody have a great evening and uh, thanks for joining me. Um, I'm going to try to send a replay for the people that signed up. I didn't get everybody's email address, but um, I'm definitely going to try to sign send a send a link so you can watch some of this stuff and todd can say we do a lot of x's and O stuff in our in our um in our office hours more than this so um have a great evening everybody and hopefully stay warm talk to you soon bye-bye